All right. Uh, well, welcome to Momentum Monday. Today is September 15th. Prove it. Guess what's coming up this week? What do you mean? It's my birthday, September 17th. Oh, yeah. That's, that's true, Howard. I know. How old am I going to be? I would guess 52. Ooh, 54. All right. 54, and I uh, did 60 miles on the bike this weekend. And I did two uh, of your crazy F45 classes. I can barely move. Good. I can tell that. Yeah. All right, let's get to it. This uh, is going to be this is kind of an interesting tip. I was reading some of your uh, pieces this week. So I'm going to let you kind of start and talk about okay. the setups that we're seeing. You know, markets are at kind of all-time highs, but there's a lot of short setups. So it's kind of it's kind of weird. Um, yeah, definitely last week we saw one big mean reversion. All the laggards that were down here today, 20-30%, had a big boom. And then all the leaders that were up 30-40, 50% or more for the year, they had a substantial haircut. Mm -hmm. And of course, interest rates spiked from a, from a multi-year low level. Mm -hmm. help financials to kind of bounce and but the main move was of course in, in small caps which they had an almost five percent weekly move they've been locked in that range here 145 to 160 mm -hmm. for a long period of time and it, as you can see this one this 160 level has has been very important, technically important for mm -hmm. a couple years or so. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, could just be short squeeze on a lot of these horrific names in the small caps, retail and banks. It could be uh, because there are a lot of interest rates, uh, interest rates finally bounced. Uh, that could be good for the banks and then retailers just were so annihilated. Yeah, interest rates are small, but they're, they're still historically uh, near their lows. So I don't yeah. think that's such a big change. So yes. probably we saw just an algo-driven mean reversion. Uh, I mean, if you look at the indices, I mean, they're near all-time highs. Mm -hmm. You would never guess that many of the momentum leaders are just looking horrible. I mean, many of them are down 20, 30, 40% in the past two to three weeks and are setting up for even... Well, I think if we look at enterprise, oh, or wow. I mean, you know, I mean, a lot of these are just coming up on their 200 day, but uh, I think if we look at it, you know, with the China overhang, everybody was hiding out in software. I mean, not that software isn't a great place to hide anyways and invest, but um, you can see the, you know, five, 6% bounce in China. Um, and so, you know, people, if people really think that uh, the, you know, he's going to cut rates and they're going to continue to cut rates and the China thing's going to pass. And, you know, you just get a rotation. I mean, this is just money moves. And I think you got to kind of figure out where the long-term trend is going to be here. I think, I think it's pretty confusing, right? I, I think um, value doesn't interest me because, uh, we've gone so long without caring about it. And I think this next generation of investors, um, based on the way they ETF invest and the brands they know, I don't think they care about owning beaten up value stocks, right? And so, I, I, what's that What's that you're pulled up there, Ivan? Oh, that's a value ETF, one, one of them, just showing how it did in the past couple of weeks. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if the the so-called value stock keep performing the way they did in the past couple couple weeks, they will become momentum stocks in a yeah. way. Yeah, except they just don't have the earnings momentum, and uh, they have price momentum, but they don't have anything to back it up. You know, the ETF, these retail stocks, were heavily short. It was easy pickings, but you know, they're in a secular decline, right? Like Amazon's not going away, Etsy, Shopify, these companies aren't going away, direct to consumers not going away. So of course, you know, we've seen retailers win, Costco, 
Home Depot, AutoZone, like some of the some of the categories have survived pretty well. But mall mall based shopping is you know is is already over. It's just a question of you know can you re jigger some leases and survive longer, but everybody's in the process of cutting stores and malls are in the process of, of changing how they design. I'm seeing it in Phoenix, you know, as I live here, we've got the Biltmore Mall, which is just becoming, it's a ghost town once Apple and Lulu left, and, and that's a high-end neighborhood. And even at Fashion Square, um, you're just seeing all kinds of re reimagining of stores in the mall, more food, uh, more entertainment, but less shopping. So, so, I'm, so, so I'm not, the, the question is, where's the momentum going to be, Ivan? And where are we seeing something? Like, let's not, if we were to, if we were to go through it, I, I, I kind of, you know, some of the, some of the things that aren't working, uh, Ivan, that may start to work is I think now that everybody's on board with suing Google and, and Fang, uh, I think we're seeing, if we look through the FANG stocks, we could see which FANG stocks uh, are, are shaking this off. And I think if you look at Google, you see it the most right here. And you see that Google, you know, gapped up on earnings back in July and um, was really digesting that gap pretty well. And it looks poised to go higher despite, you know, 48 attorney generals going after them. So I don't think, I don't think government can catch up to these companies on antitrust. And it is building an incredible base, a couple year base here. Yeah, I agree. I mean, out of the big five, I think Google looks the most. Uh, I would say Google number one. Apple, if it can get. So I, I was really getting excited about Apple, but I think the Goldman downgrade put a. Uh, I think if Apple can regain the prices pre Goldman downgrade, it's off to the races, and it just may do that, right? Goldman could just be messing with the stock to get a position as it gets as it gets going but um you know i guess you got to include microsoft in there too which hasn't given up but i think facebook looks, right. yeah. facebook and netflix look the most vulnerable but i mean these fang stocks are holding in there really good despite the 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 momentum sell up ivan so where did we see the momentum sell up most uh the sell off happened in all momentum names. I mean, primarily software, but not only. We even saw stocks like Visa and Mastercard pulling back, which is normal. They they often when there is a big positive move in banks, Visa and Mastercard kind of dip. Okay. And also, um, so all momentum stocks, all stocks that did that did well here to date took a sizable haircut in the past couple of weeks. But the hardest hit were, of course. Uh, software and yeah Twilio uh, one of my favorite companies I own is looking looking very weak below <clears> their yeah. 200 day moving average and I think they might have some more downside room yeah yeah no 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 uh, not sure what uh, listen it's not a cheap stock so you know I've been selling on the way up I'm not adding any here I'm not adding to any of those um, <clears throat> so, so I'm looking for new names, uh, to add here, but if it, if it got much weaker, I'd probably look to re-add some, uh, Shopify finally sold off, but this, this could yeah. be just good rotation. Yeah. Quite a few of them are actually have formed bear flags here. So it's yeah. really important how they react. I mean, this area here, 340, it's, you know, it's, technical support. So, so if it draws below it, I think we can see a quick move to 300. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't have 200 day until 250. Oh, so yeah, again, so far, there's, yeah. there's, there's no room for me. You know, that's where I'd be adding uh, some stock that I'd sold on the way up. So I'm not even looking at these. Yeah, so, there are a lot of, a lot of moving pieces uh, right now in the puzzle. Uh, for example, today we uh, have crude oil futures up almost 12 percent after there was a drone attack of uh, two of the uh, major oil fields in saudi arabia as you can see oil futures up 11 12 percent mm -hmm. down slightly about half a percent um so th there are quite a few moving pieces it's not just some mean reversion and value stock rallying and software uh 
Um, no, I, I think, like you said, Ivan, the, the, there's, there's some fresh ideas. Like I think semiconductor, if I was going to go from the top, I go, interesting, the China news, Trump's got, he's fighting battles on a hundred fronts. So lately it's, you know, he's friendly on he, the tone, the rhetoric on China's down and the semiconductors are very light. You know, they, 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 they're not that heavy when he's been freaking out and they've been quick to come back. Yes. Uh, actually quite a few of them are looking. Yeah. So the two that stood out to me are Taiwan semiconductor at all time high. And again, I don't know semiconductors that well, but I would say. Oh, it's, you know, it's setting up near all time highs for sure. I mean, the interesting thing about semiconductors is that other than they're setting up near all time highs is that there's no growth, at least this year. <laughs> As you can see the past few, the past few quarters, uh, they had negative earnings growth, almost non-existent sales growth. Right, and, uh, but they but they haven't crashed like they used to in the past. So, so yeah. you know, they've gone through kind of a cycle here where they've di digested some huge gains. I look at Teradyne, which I, I'm, I'm long, and it, we rarely get semiconductors on our, our momentum list. And, and you know, it's... Absolutely, they're, they're definitely looking... Holding its gap. Which you know, which I'm long, and and they're more in the computer and electronic game. Yeah, yeah. as I said, quite a few of them are setting up near multi-year highs, um, and we also saw a big move in in Intel, which is kind of back near a, its earnings gap here from two quarters ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we still have a lot of big cap, you know, a little lot of big cap, big cap names, you know, hanging in there. And then you have, you know, JP Morgan and Goldman are pretty strong too. You know, I don't own them, but. The entire financial sector just hit a tremendous uh, uh, week and a half. With, yeah. Of course, with the interest rates spiking and bonds uh, mean yeah. reverting. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see that. Yep. And gold, everybody was long gold and now it's in a big sell off. Definitely. I mean, I wouldn't say big sell, but definitely. Oh, no, it's not in a big sell. Sorry. Okay. It's just. Still, still above its 50, above its 50 day. And. Um, no, so it didn't really give back that much. Okay. So there's a lot going on. Let's go to the momentum list and go through a few names. I've never seen more of my names on the list, right? From uh, Twitter, Lulu, uh, Teradyne, Elastic. I would yeah. say Elastic is probably yeah. the strongest. Even Google is back on the list. I mean, you don't. Yeah, was, well, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, remember, we're not seeing that many high growth names. So I don't know, does the list automatically always have 50 Ivan or can it drop off to less than 50 names? It can, it can drop to less, to less than 50. That's very so, rare. So that is interesting. But I think some interesting ones on here, Cirrus Logic, uh, another semiconductor first week on. And I, I generally don't own semiconductors, but... Um, it's just building a... Yeah, another. So you can see a lot of semis kind of just they gapped up, you know, they've kind kind of gone a couple months digesting these gaps. So the next move will be a big one, one way or the other. Uh, Elastic, I'm I'm pretty excited about. It's one of my bigger positions, um, and uh, you know, it's kind of it's not it's kind of no man's land until it gets back above a hundred. But uh, volumes really picking up on the stock, and uh, Earnings have been great, so kind of excited about it. It's really one of the leaders in open source around search. Okay, next up on the list, I and does anything stand out to you? I mean, I'm seeing that other than semiconductors, uh, I'm, also, I'm also seeing some Chinese stocks setting up for a potential breakout, and I think the, those two are related, the semiconductors and Chinese stocks, because if there's no deal with China, which is very likely, I don't think those they will go far. Mm -hmm. um, for example, Alibaba, if you take a bigger picture look, I mean, it, it's looking pretty constructive here near 180. If it can clear 180, I think it can go back near 200. Also, um, yeah, I mean, considering it does look really constructive, whereas Tencent does not. JD, where's Tencent? Uh, Tencent, let's see. Oh, it's back above its 50 day. Yes, so, it's, 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 but okay. we're talking three years now of sideways action, so. Yeah. So quite a few Chinese stocks actually have had. That probably looks the strongest. Where's that on a weekly? Yeah. So this one is also looking good. Oh, oh, 
even this one, looking coffee, which valuation is just insane. Yeah. Even there. So, you know, the Chinese uh, digital companies have, you know, have just been, they haven't, you know, they haven't, and they kind of just been going sideways and digesting massive gains. The winners or the leaders are kind of marking time for the last two, three years. And, uh, you know, one of the things about the Chinese digital companies, they do so well, they don't have to really cheat. It's not like the old world of China. Like I've said this before, it's like these companies print money and they have so many users. Um, so you can see Baidu is probably one of the weakest of the Chinese, just never really modernized their digital play. Kind of, they didn't do as good a job as Google as, as getting into other, you know, beyond search. Um, and so you can see, you know, they got passed over, whereas Google kind of is back at all time highs. Okay, so I think there's a lot to choose from. I, I, I'm in no rush. I think like this, I don't really, I think there's a lot of noise right now, even though the market's right at all time highs. I think uh, there still remains massive headline risk. Um, but uh, if you own the right stocks, it's working. I mean, the S&P's had a great year though. I mean, just being an index investor has been you know 18% year. Year to date, yes. But uh, compared to where it was exactly a year ago, Nothing that impressive, I would say. Yeah, but uh, but like I said, like for for the year, it's been a great year. It's been hard to beat the indexes this year uh, because of this last sell-off and a lot of these inner and a lot of these mo momentum names. And then the IPO market just really struggled. So I think that's that's kind of had its. If you look at the IPO index, uh, you can see that uh, I think it's just IPO. Yeah. yeah. You can just see that's kind of why the momentum's dried up. You know, it's been a good market and the IPOs just have not done well for over a year. And, uh, you know, we need better companies earlier coming public with growth. Because this is generally, if you want momentum, you got to watch this index and there's just no momentum there. Yeah. So I, I mean, don't think, I don't think you're going to get, to, I think you've had, enterprises have had these great runs. You know, they're trading at, 10 to 30 times sales. And so it's obvious that if the market gets stronger, there's going to be a rotation and we're starting to see it. And I think the first rotation is into the safer Apple, you know, Googles. And then I think we're going to see where the new leadership comes up. And if it's in biotech or medical services or semiconductors, I think you'll start seeing some big moves and they generally happen in names you just haven't heard. That's why you got to keep an eye on the all time high list and on the momentum list. Yep. I agree. Okay. All right, then uh, let's finish up with this then. Yeah, have a great week, everybody. And uh, I'll see you next week. Yep.